Hello and welcome to Five Writers, Five Minutes, where we, us fabulous writers, take you through various aspects of our writing process. My name is Zanny Louise. My name is Deborah Abella. I'm Tristan Banks. I'm Leanne Tanner. And I'm Sarah Armstrong. So today we are talking about sparking the action, which is a particular moment right at the beginning of the story, which catapults your character into their journey, basically. It's used in film theory quite specifically, like it is a particular moment uh, that triggers all the action. And the example I like to think about is Dorothy's house in The Wizard of Oz, which goes whipping away with a tornado and lands on a wicked witch. That is just such a great visual for the kind of thing an inciting incident can be. Uh, You know, it needs to be life-changing for this character it needs to force them into action it needs to change their life and their journey in in ways that (laughs) they can't go back from basically um so for example in Queenie and Seven Moves uh Queenie is comfortable she loves her comfort she is safe in her comfort she has never moved house her house and it's all set up like this right in the beginning her house is the most important thing to her so of course the first thing I'm going to do from her for her is whip away her house I'm going to send it off in a tornado um not literally in this case because it's it's (laughs) realism um but I'm going to take away that thing and so that catapults her into action and into her journey so quite soon after this we usually have the character's goals so we we start to understand what the character wants in the story and that's going to be the thing that drives our character through their journey what do you think about this topic Deb have you got any examples you can share with us yeah I do and I I love that idea of um, the character being safe in their lovely world and then something coming in and making them go "Uh, uh, uh-uh-uh you're too careful you're too comfortable and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna mess with that I love too that sometimes it's about what the character wants but it's also sometimes what about what the character needs <laughs> so what mm. they want and what they need sometimes is a very different thing but uh, for example I wrote a, a book called Grimston years ago about kids living in a flooded city and um, chapter one you know a boy a, a boy they hadn't met before breaks into their house and they they string him up <laughs> by his legs um, and he's sort of you know swaying through the room and they're like who are you and what do you want and so these kids who are already living in a flooded city tricky times uh, they're very cozy amongst themselves and then this intruder comes in and they find out that yes he's an intruder and he broke into their house so they can't trust him but also he has a flying machine and in a flooded city that's going to come in very very handy Andy. So I love the idea of the inciting incident being something that lifts your characters out of their comfortable spot. Um, and in the book of wondrous possibilities, Arlo, a bookish shy boy who stays in his bookshop all day that he um, lives in with his uncle until chapter one, you know, page one, a young girl rushes in and says, you have to help me. I'm being chased by a murderer. And all this boy wants is to, uh, uh-uh, I don't want girls in trouble and I don't want murderers. I just want my lovely space. So, but we, you know, us authors, that's not what we do. We don't leave our characters in lovely, calm spaces. No, and the tricky <laughs> thing is, Deb, I think in days of yore, people used to spend the first part of their book or their movie in a very boring everyday mm-hmm. world. And this is the character going about their milk run and then nothing <laughs> really happens. And that's a third of the way into the book. Now, yeah. you know, we know that we have to capture the reader on the first page because they could be off watching 15 second videos on TikTok or could be, you know, whatever, scrolling through whatever it is if they're older readers. So how do you both um, grab people on page one with an exciting thing, but then also then crank up the action so that the inciting incident is even more exciting than page one. And then from the inciting incident, we're gonna be driven all the way through the story to this climax that's even bigger than either of those points. And I think that's a big challenge. Um, at the beginning of my book, Scar Town, I have these three kids on the edge of a lake. They're looking out and there's a house poking out of the lake and the drought has come. This house has revealed itself uh, in this old town that's buried beneath the lake. They dare each other to swim out to the house. They go outside, they're looking inside through this house. It's really creepy. They're trying to freak each other out. But the inciting incident doesn't happen on page one, even though that's an exciting scenario. Mm -hmm. The inciting incident more happens when they find something inside the wall of the house. Mm -hmm is rotting wall and when they find that thing inside the wall that's what changes their ordinarily pretty boring lives into something exciting and where they have to go on a search to find out uh you know who this money belongs to and who this other thing belongs to that they find inside the wall 
Mm. Yeah, I'm. I, I like this. Um, I like this idea of, of showing a little bit of the, their world before this thing happens. I think that's really important, and and I think it's important to remember that the world they're in before the inciting incident doesn't necessarily have to be a safe world or a happy world, but it's familiar. It's what they're used to, and it's what they know how to deal with. And then something happens. So. Um, Zanny, you had your favourite image from the from the Wizard of Oz. My favourite image is a picture I've got of a group of brontosauruses grazing happily somewhere. Um, and for them, it's just an ordinary day, you know, just another day. But what we can see in the sky is this meteor approaching. Yeah. <laughs> and we know that their world is about to change irrevocably. And it's it's such a lovely visual metaphor for an inciting incident. Um, in, in Spellhound, uh, the, the world is reasonably safe at the beginning. This starts in the floating forest. It's reasonably safe. But our two characters who we meet almost straight away, there's Flax, the Minchwigan, and there's the Spellhound pup, neither of them are happy. They are both really worried about something and they've both got a dark and terrible secret. But this is what they're familiar with. And then something happens. A dragon arrives in the floating forest and the spellhound pup runs for his life and accidentally takes flax with him. <laughs> and that throws them, throws them literally into the world below as they fall off the edge of the floating forest and throws them into the story. So a little bit, not too much of the world that they know. And then whoom, they're off into the story. Yeah. And what I would do, I would say, is that the inciting incident or this kind of thing that sets the story in motion, it's actually the first thing I think about when I'm planning a story. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking, what is it and where am I going to place it? Because, yes, you can place it on page one, but then you don't get to give your characters ordinary world, so you don't get to feel the significance of it because you only feel the significance of this thing that's tipped the world upside down if you know what the world was like before. So I dealt with that in um, Big Magic by just doing this little hook in the prologue. So the first line, the inciting incident actually happens on page 33, but the first line of the book is, the day my mother disappears, the sky is the most dazzling blue I've ever seen it. So it's this little foreshadowing mm -hmm. book that foreshadows. Mm -hmm. So the reader hopefully reads it and goes, hang on, what? Yeah. Uh, but the mother doesn't actually disappear till page 33. So that's how I got around it because I had to show Tulsi's ordinary world in the circus before her mum disappears and that she has to go and rescue her. So, yes, it's really the first thing I think about and... I keep coming back to it and thinking about where where to place it. And likewise, in, in Magic Araya, the sequel, the actual inciting incident happens on like page 13, which is Tulsi falling while she's flying around the big top. Um, so there's 15 pages um, to set up the, the new world. I, you know, mm. twice as quickly I got to it in the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've learned so much from you guys today, as I always do. Uh, so basically, we set up their familiar and then something happens. So think about what that something is for you when you're writing your stories. We'd love to hear about it. If you want to let us know, we're always open for that. We are a podcast. We are a YouTube channel. Write well, be creative. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye.